And with that, we go to the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Uh, Kelly. I thank you, Chairman and Secretary. Uh, thanks for being here today. And you are in a very tough position. I, and I really would suggest that it is really not the pain at the pump that is affecting a lot of the comments anymore. It is the pain at the polls. Uh, that is certainly driving the, the great interest of how we are going to solve this Nation's energy problems. And, and I have got to tell you, I, I was very impressed with your resume. You certainly are. And the Chairman said that earlier, one of the smartest people that has ever been here. Uh, in your, in your statement, you said, I have spent my career as a scientist. Rigorous peer review and double checking someone else's findings are fundamental to a sound scientific process. And I believe the same is true in government. The American people expect all of us to honestly assess the investments we have made and chart a course for the future. You also were talking about job creation and things that have happened. And I am a little bit confused because when I look at the claim that there's over 60,000 jobs created, I say, okay, well, 33,000 of those jobs for, for the advanced uh, technology vehicles uh, for Ford, those people are already at Ford. So you didn't really create those. That's just now they are wearing a little different cap. 3,000 at Solyndra that's bankrupt, 240 at Poet, which declined the loan, 188 at Abound, which is layoff, that have been laid off, and 34 at Beacon went, went bankrupt, and 26 at Fisker that were laid off. Actually, the net total is 24,900. So if we are going to inspect other people's data and other people's findings, then we really need to get down to the actual empirical data that we have to deal with. It is nowhere near 60,000 jobs. It is just about half that amount. And a lot of that is dubious also. When I hear about this increased production in oil under this administration, and this is not an original quote, but it is very much like the crowing rooster taking credit for the daybreak. Just because you happen to be sitting in a position that's benefiting from years, years of technology coming now into fruition. And I know a little bit about it. My family has a 147-year background in energy production. Fracking is 60 to 70 years old. It isn't new. Uh, it, so it, I think that we sometimes get these things twisted around when it comes to a political reelection as opposed to real answers for our energy problems. And I've got to tell you, that I'm trying to understand as a private citizen and one who has borrowed great deals of money from time to time. I thought it was a great deal of money for me because I actually had to pay it back. I had my own skin in the game. But when I look at, at some of these, these loans, and I'm trying to understand, now this is maybe not you, but you have a team of people that would be approving these loans. Mr. Jordan asked about it, Mr. Chaffetz asked about it, and my colleagues have asked about it. There is no way in heck anybody could have looked at these if it was their own money. If you were truly a lender who was responsible to a group of investors for the way your money was being lent, you would say, no, 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 we can't invest this way. There is something called the five C's that, that comes up, and, and most lenders would talk to you about it as character, capacity, uh, capital, collateral, and conditions. All those come into effect before any loan is given out to any person trying to borrow it. But I wonder, as a scientist, and you say, you say about I wanted to check. I wanted to double check. There is no way anybody double checked or nobody looked at these things. This isn't science. This is a basic business model that has failed dramatically, and it has failed with American taxpayer money. So this idea that we are these benevolent monarchs just showering these favors to these folks is absolutely preposterous. We have wasted so much money. And a lady from California was asking about, you know, fossil fuels produce 78 percent of American energy. 13 percent of the tax incentives. Renewables, they are responsible for 11 percent of production, and they get 77 percent of tax incentives. So if we were asking which one did you want to eliminate, I would say, you know what, I think I will put my money on a horse that I think can win. So I really do. I wonder. And, and, and sitting there as a private citizen coming here for the first time, an automobile dealer my whole life, having to fund everything myself, having collateral, having character, having the ability to have great deals of money, capital of my own, to invest in any type of a way I project before any lender would even look at me, is incredible to me that we have gotten to this point today where we have wasted billions and billions of hardworking American taxpayer money on some green dream that isn't playing out very well. Now, I got to tell you, uh, this is the House of Representatives represents the people of the United States. I don't come here as a Republican. I come here just as an American. And I hope my friends from the other side feel the same way. The American people deserve to know, how could we have been so careless and so casual 
with billions of taxpayer dollars. You know, in 1703, the, Section 1703, we were looking at nuclear, fossil, and renewables. We went to Section 1705, you know what we completely left out? Nuclear and fossil. And it is all renewables. I just don't understand anybody's economic model that looked at something that was such a long shot and saying, you know what, I think this is right. I think this is what we should go for. In fact, you know what you really drove out of the market were the venture capitalists. And I would like to submit for the record a letter from Bright Automotive. Without objection, so ordered. This is, this is uh, I think we have a slide on this, too. When Ruben Munger and, and, and the gentleman have an additional one minute, okay. without objection, so ordered. All right. All right. Dear Te Secretary Chu, this is February 28th. This is very, very recent. Today, Bright Automotive will, will withdraw its application for a loan under the ATVM program administered by your department. Bright has not been explicitly rejected by the Department of Energy. Rather, we have been forced to say, uncle. As a result, we are winding down our operations. Last week, we received the fourth near final conditional commitment letter since September 2010. Each new letter arrived with more onerous terms than the last. The first three were workable for us, but the last was so outlandish that most rational and objective persons would likely conclude that your team was negotiating in bad faith. We hope that as their secretary, this was not at your urging. And as you look at this, I mean, we really have driven the venture capitalists out of the market because, you know what, they cannot compete with a group of bureaucrats, uh, bureaucrats that have absolutely no background but are making decisions that would have been made by them based on the likelihood of a good investment. So the Energy Department may well intentioned, but has absolutely destroyed a part of the investment industry through an absolutely preposterous model that has no basis to be even looked at and said, you know what, these were good decisions based on good information. If it had a 50 percent chance of survival, I would like to talk to one lender that would have said thumbs up on that one. It just wouldn't have happened. So 